I got to take a deep breath on this one for me. And my heart rate's already amplified. My, my watch <laughs> is telling me, it's like your heart rate's elevated. What's going on? It's like my blood pressure's through the roof. Because tonight we're talking about Halloween ends. Um, but before we talk about it, the stuff that we normally have to talk about every episode, you guys sh- should be used to this. And you're like, why do you even say it? Because we're hoping that more people hear these words. Even Not you. Just- if you haven't done it yet, you are the, who we are talking to. Yes. Follow us on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Launchpad Pod and our website, Launchpad Pod, and on YouTube. You will see how red my face good gets today, tonight. Um, blood pressure dies tonight. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> we're going to talk about the final thrilling conclusion of the Laurie Strode saga that was promised to us from 2018's Halloween. So let's get to it on the Launchpad Podcast. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. Right, welcome to the Launchpad Podcast. I'm Aaron. Uh, Matt. And Matt. We we're talking boop, about Halloween boop, ends. People, people, people. Five more days till Halloween. Hell yeah. Halloween. 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 Bum, bum, bum. I wish we were talking about that. We could talk about that anytime, but we have to talk about this other movie that came out called Halloween Ends, which is supposed to be the thrilling conclusion of the Laurie Strode saga. And, um, you know, picks up right where the last one left off. Halloween kills ends. Evil dies tonight. She he just killed his her daughter. Laurie Strode is staring at him through the window, and the movie picks up right there. And the action hasn't even lost a moment of momentum. Nope, that's not what happens at all. That would be a good movie. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a cool movie. That would be that would be awesome. That's what I wanted to have happen. Well, um, Halloween. What was it? Twenty eighteen. Halloween yeah. and Halloween kills do have that feel from the original Halloween and Halloween two where it literally just keeps going, right? It just yeah. goes into the next movie and it just, it's the same night, the same, I guess the same level of, of pace and the same yeah. story and the same, like they're trying for the same things in both movies, I think. And that's what this one should have done. But instead it's like, let's take a page out of Halloween three's book, but the only part of the page where it's like, no, Michael Myers is verily in it. And um, yeah, I think I think Halloween three, the original, had about as much Michael Myers in it as this one did. Um, <laughs> he's on a TV at one point, uh, and and then that's about it. Um, so so, okay, let's start here. It picks well, I, like, up- Rumi is so flustered, you guys. He texted me a couple days ago and was like, "Did you see Halloween end yet?" And I don't remember if you saw it first or if I did, but I saw it in I saw it in a theater on Friday night. Did you I see it before? I am so that? fucking sorry that you paid money to see this in. But a here's the thing: thing. I didn't hate it. it I, I'm not gonna say I loved it, and it was not as enjoyable as Halloween Three. But well, well let's talk about it. Look at Ruby's face. <laughs> I was so excited to talk about this because you are hating it so much. I could feel it across God. half of the United States, Holy and I was like, fuck. it wasn't it wasn't that bad. Wasn't that bad? What? Uh, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to pinpoint. Up. You're gonna have to yeah, pinpoint I pull one thing. I gotta up my thing. notes. I forgot. Okay. I wrote my notes on my so, phone. I have so to it picks up four years later, and the woman who has literally, literally become the Creighton Duke of Michael Myers. Right. The I will hunt him to the ends of his earth and talk about pink donuts. The Creighton Duke of Michael Myers, Lori Strode has has devoted her life to hunting him. She had him caught. He's now killed her kid. He has escaped. He's on the lam. And four years later, she's fine. She's fine. She's put not just fine. There. She's an old grandma. Would anybody like any pie? Yeah. And like, yeah, she's talking about showing fear, her tits and all this stuff. But she's still like, oh, damn it, my pie. And you're like, what? <laughs> if you had devoted your life to killing someone and he has slaughtered your entire family except for your granddaughter and you don't have this guy's head mounted to your wall. Are you writing a book about it? <laughs> the entire town she was is writing like, a book about it. The whole town's like, well, I guess we forgot. If you are screaming something over and over and over again, like <laughs> evil dies tonight or lock her up, and then you don't do it, 
You look fucking stupid. You look like a bunch of fucking morons. What, a, like, how can the entire town have just forgotten what a bunch of fucking morons they were for screaming this shit? You look like a fucking ah. idiot. If you keep screaming the same thing over and over again and then you don't actually do it, that's why you shouldn't get into mob violence and be a fucking idiot. Lock her up. You all look like assholes. Evil dies tonight. You all look like even bigger assholes. You didn't do the job. <laughs> and everybody just forgot about it? Okay. Okay, fine. What's Michael Myers up to? Uh, check back in 45 minutes, fucker, because you got nothing. You better strap in for this awesome love story because this is all you're getting. Look how fucking angry this guy is. You guys really need to go on YouTube and check it out because he is... Like, I, I am worried about him. I would have my hand on top of his hand if we were recording in person. <laughs> I want to hold hands right now, Ruby. I would let you hold my hand right now because this That's movie big stuff, guys. <laughs> failed on so many levels. It failed as a Halloween movie. Do not even tell me that you think it succeeded as a Halloween movie. This no, is the worst I, Halloween movie to ever come out. And we had the Thorn Saga. No, I know. I agree. I would agree with that. But, but then like, people are like, oh, but like. As a movie, if you if it wasn't called Halloween, they're trying to pull the Halloween three. If it wasn't called a Halloween movie, it'd be a decent horror movie. Correct. If it was just called Scary Babysitter Guy Becomes the Boogeyman. No, Man. it's not. Because there's only four kills that he commits. They're all stupid. And I'm so fucking tired of dudes who <laughs> get bullied <laughs> turning into some killer. That's not cool. If you get bullied, go be better than them. Make more money. Bang a hotter chick. Do something to just prove <laughs> that you're better than them. But becoming a killer is like the pussiest thing possible because that's what they want. Because as a society, when somebody gets up on a bridge, what do we chant? Jump, jump, jump. They want you to become the killer. And then if he doesn't do it, he looks stupid for your stupid. rules, right? Yeah. No, I'm saying to live better and get down off the bridge is the stronger thing to do than to give in to the peer pressure. Everybody wanted that kid to be the killer that they thought he was. And he gave into it because the entire town told him he was a killer. So then he became a killer. The killer in me is the killer in you. Oh, my God. It was such oh just God. whiny, cry, cry, baby, cry, cry, baby bullshit. And everybody in this movie was not the characters they left off with. Laurie Strode, who the fuck are you? Her her granddaughter was like, you know, actually, grandma uh, uh, is, uh, has been proven right. Like, I finally, she, in the last movie, was like, you better invite grandma to dinner because she believed in what her grandmother was saying. And in this one, she's like, fuck you, grandma. I'm going to fuck who I want to fuck, even if it is this loser asshole. That's Zero just... reason. For no reason other than I kind of oh, kind of oh. recognize him as a kindred spirit, right? Yeah. And it, it's, 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 it's not even a good movie. It's not a good horror movie. Nothing about it was scary. A kid who becomes a killer. We saw the Joker. That was a better version of this. And the Joker <laughs> made sense. The Joker had stakes. This kid... To solve his problem, needed to move. All he had to do was pack his bags and go. That would have been more interesting than what we had. He didn't have a car, so it was hard. Oh, yeah. Well, he got that motorcycle, so... <laughs> Hero's oh. journey. Yeah. So, he, oh, so there's so many. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, we're going to do spoilers. And if you haven't seen the movie, you really should because you don't, you don't know what it's about. For real. Whatever you think it's about, if you haven't read spoilers the or seen the internet, we're you're all wrong. way off. Yeah, you're the trailers were all wrong. When you read what it says, like, in the description, it's like, the final thrilling conclusion of the Laurie Strode versus Michael Myers. No. At what point did the producers... There's one scene. Yeah. At what point did the producers and the directors go, oh, fuck, we did a bait and switch. Oh, no. Like, did they realize it happened? I was wondering that too, but I bet you the people that made the movie, the producers and the directors who were working on the film, as opposed to the greater production company at large, probably was not overseeing everything and understanding, oh, this is like a new blood situation. And then kind of at the last minute changes back. But at least new blood delivered on the new blood of it. There was blood. <laughs> this changed tone completely. Yes. And this taught me one thing about the, the series, <clears throat> that from day one that Halloween existed, it split the fan base. Because some people were like, oh, that's creepy in a good movie. The original, original movie. And some people said, I wanted more kills and I wanted it to be scarier. And then they got Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th. They're like, that's what I want. And then everybody was like, well, I want like a stalkery kind of creepy movie that isn't heavy on the kills and violence. And then they got Rob Zombie. And they're like, I hate that. And then... 
it kind of came full circle and we got Halloween Kills. And I'm like, hey, I'm back on board with Michael Myers. I love it again. This is this is what I wanted the whole time. I've been, you know, lackluster on the Halloween franchise. Halloween Kills come out. And I'm like, here, whoa, whoa, this is what I want. And then there's backlash and they succumb to the backlash like a bunch of fucking nerds picking on them. And then they go, okay, here's your cerebral little whiny baby bullshit movie with a weak ass Michael Myers again. <laughs> how do you how do you like that? Well, I'm here to tell you it fucking sucks because I don't think it satisfied people. Was there a bunch it. of people whining about something in the Halloween franchise earlier than this that you think made this be a cer- more cerebral movie? Yeah, I think when Halloween Kills came out, everybody like c- c- complained about it. I felt like I was on an island of the person who was like, oh, I thought it was great. I thought it was the, the like second or third best Halloween film. No, 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 no. Oh, I kind of don't remember. I'll that. put it in the top five. I'll put it in the top five. And everybody else was like, no, th- he was more like Jason Voorhees you know, than Michael Myers. You guys don't deserve good horror movies. You guys don't deserve good slasher <laughs> Go movies. Go sit in the corner. Go you don't sit know in the what corner. horror is. So, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So that's, that's how this happened. That's how this came about. Um, and it sucked. <sighs> so so. <laughs> <laughs> we pick up not with Michael Myers, barely with even Laurie Strode. We pick up with this kid, Corey. Has he been in any of the other movies, Matt? No, he hasn't. Oh. And, well, well, I, really? I oh. guess when you make a movie like this, right, there's two people who are watching it. And I actually watch this with people in this gamut, me and you who know Halloween. We will get the references, at least most of them, right? We certainly get callbacks. We certainly follow the thread of the plot. We certainly, like, if there's a character in it, we're starting to be like, wait, how is this going to tie in? Who is this new guy going to be? What is this situation in this baby? Because he's a new babysitter, right? He's babysitting a kid. We don't know the family. We don't know the kid. We don't know the house. And we're like, okay, what is this going to be? And this scene, this whole scene plays out where this new, weird, pushing his glasses up babysitter comes in and this family's about to leave, a man and a woman, and they're leaving him with a little kid. And they say, oh, go to bed. And she pulls him aside and she's like, listen, since Halloween, Michael Myers a couple years ago. So now they're telling us that the last thing we saw was years ago. She's like, he's been really afraid and he wakes up and he has nightmares, but et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he's like, oh, that sounds like normal kid stuff to me. And immediately I'm like, who are you mousy kid to tell this wife, this mom, that her kid's shit is normal? But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know who hates that? Adults hate that. Adults yeah. and kids hate that. Yeah. I hate, yeah. You want I a 21-year-old kid, yeah. kid to tell you yeah. that sounds like normal kid stuff? Yeah. Unless now, you have a degree in fucking kid shit, fuck the shut the fuck, fuck off. Now, that, that caught me when it happened. But in a couple minutes, it made me more, more angry at this scene. <laughs> Parents leave. They immediately start watching John Carpenter's The Thing. The babysitter get that, and the kid just bad mouths him, starts cursing at him. Yeah, he gets calling up calling him for a, a wiener and stuff. Yeah, or call him an ass face, ugly ass face kid. For and they're like, where is this coming from? Yeah, but this is going to be a thing throughout the movie where people don't act like people. Almost, almost in a room esque thing where it's like, who talks like this? Ugh. Babysitter leaves, hears a noise, comes back. The room is disheveled. Can't find the kid. There's a knife missing. He starts to hear a struggle upstairs. He goes upstairs. He finds the knife on the floor. He walks into what we guess is the attic, and they've already established this giant Amityville horror type staircase that goes around and around. Yeah. And I think it does a good job building the suspense and stuff, and you're wondering if this is a trick or a Michael Myers or oh, something yeah. different. Yeah, you're like, oh, I bet this is going to be Michael Myers, right? Right. So you're like, oh, is he going to kill a kid or is is this just a ploy by Michael Myers to kill his babysitter? <laughs> Whatever. You still, you don't know where it's going. And I was like, OK, I, I'll come with you. But then he goes, happens? he goes upstairs into what is presumably an attic. Yeah. And he, we don't really know because they don't really show the geography of anything. And the kid slams the door closed on him. Yeah. And holds and it this, shut like a dick. This 21 year old kid who's a babysitter flips out now this is my problem when the mom was talking about the boy being afraid of michael myers you could have had this Corey kid the babysitter instead of telling her what is normal for a child to think he could have said oh well i you know i can understand that we're all afraid of something i can get really claustrophobic sometimes boom okay that's a little breadcrumb because now he's flipping out in the attic and the parents come in and it's I think it's the tension is built, but you knew some you knew pretty much what was going to happen. Yeah. The parents walk in. He kicks the door open in the attic. 
He kicks it into the kid. The kid stumbles over the railing and we see it from the um, top. Then it cuts to the mom. And I love this. The mom is looking towards camera and is like, where's so-and-so? And all of a sudden, whoop, boom, in the background, he hits the ground. And then it cuts to the reverse shot. And he kind of like bounces back into frame a bit and comes back down. It was brutal. Yeah. That's, she starts flipping. But she starts flipping out. She looks up and you see the babysitter kid looking down and she's like, what have you done? What have you done? You killed him. And then it cuts to Halloween ends. Do, 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 the do, first do, kill do, 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 of a do, Halloween do, do, movie isn't Michael Myers. Well, well, stupid, fucking dumb. But like, and, and to me, this is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not the normal flavor. But I was like, that scene worked. There was a lot of, well, not a lot of, there was a couple problems that I think could have been fixed easily, but I was on board. The suspense was there. It was well made. I liked what happened. And that last couple shots, that brutal kill, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not understanding where you're going, but I will come with you. I wasn't off board yet. How about that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Rumi, have you ever babysitted? Babysat. Yeah, you, no, well, not, not since the attic situation, but yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Lots. Rule number two is don't kill the kid. He broke, he, he, rule number Wait, two. what's rule number one? Don't fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well at, at good news, I never broke either rule. But rule number three is have him in bed before the parents get home. So he's batting over. Yes, and like, I thought of, like, I just I actually rewatched this. Sucks right I rewatched now. this last night. So I've now seen this movie twice. But yes, I thought the same thing. I was like, he was fucked when those parents got home regardless. Yeah. Because that yeah. kid was awake watching John Carpenter's The Thing. Thing, yeah. Rule number three is have them in bed before your parents get home. Nothing else matters. Rule number four is make sure the house doesn't look like a mess. Like, but, oh my God, dude. The house is a mess. The kid's dead. He's definitely not in bed. At least you didn't fuck him. That's, that's all he can say at this point. That's, that's, oh my God. So, Corey... After the town, it was an accident, but after the town is like, he's a murderer, he packs up, goes away, and deals with his grief in an appropriate manner, right? Right? That's what happens, Well, right? <laughs> that could be what happens. The problem is, we come back from the credit sequence. Oh. Which is like, fine. Okay. We come back from the credit sequence, and there's no indication of where or when we are. Corey is working, is riding his bike. And but he, he, rides does, he hasn't to, aged a second. He hasn't right. aged one second. He, Clearly like, is the same kid. Yeah. He yeah. rides to a mechanic yeah. shop. He does mechanic shit. And a large man who works at or owns the mechanic shop gives him a motorcycle. And turns you're out like, it's okay, his dad? Question, question mark? mark? We'll talk guy, about that. Guy banging his mom? Question mark? And this, again, is one of my main things with this movie is it doesn't explain certain things that make questions. And to me, it's a very Tommy Wiseau thing of, I know you've made a movie before. I know it would have been easy with one or two lines of dialogue to explain this situation, but you're not. Are you not doing it on purpose? Like, it was just weird. Anyway, so, but again, it doesn't say two months later. It doesn't say two years later. We have no idea how old he is. We know that it's, he was 21 in the first scene, or so he tells the kid before he kills him. He tells the kid he's 21. <clears throat> so then... He, well, actually, it, there's a voiceover. First, yeah. there's a voiceover flashback in case you've never seen any other Halloween movies. Lori Strode has a voiceovers. voiceover. <laughs> yeah. Also odd, but she does a voiceover and it, it ends with talking about letting the evil inside, which I didn't really pick up on the first viewing. But the second viewing, it makes more sense. Okay. We see this guy, this kid, um, this 21 year old getting picked on by kids, these little punks, these punks that they're in a band and they have like big mohawks. And like, um, you know, they have big mohawks and chains around their necks and like spiked leather vests because they're 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 in a band. No, you're thinking of a different movie. Oh, this. That's right. Because they're in marching band. One of them is marching band. No, they all say they're in marching band. They do say they say that. But one yeah. of them literally wears a marching band outfit. Yeah. One of them just likes like, looks like a thick lesbian. The other one is the senior jock wearing the Letterman jacket. Then there was another dude who has like shaved eyebrows and like. A long mullet, a mullet, but with the sides shaved, and he's always spinning one drumstick. And you're like, it looked like you just took the misfit gangs of the Warriors and you took their least intimidating member of each gang and made a new gang. That's what yeah. the bullies are, right? 
Yeah, band geeks. The band geeks fuck this kid up. Like, fuck him up. Cut his hand real bad. And this is the worst bullying I think I may have ever seen. Like, I always, in Stephen King books and movies, it's always like pulling out switchblades and carving your name in a fat kid's chest. And I'm always like, I've seen bullying, but I've never seen Stephen King bullying. Remember in Kazam when they drag him into a sewer and basically waterboard him under a sewer pipe of like, just turn it on and he's like drowning in it. Kazam with the uh, Shaq. Yeah. No, I don't. It's on my watch list, but I haven't seen it in a while. It's awful, but it has one of the most aggressive bullying sequences I've ever seen. Cause this kid's like talking to this girl. And he's like, Hey, how's it going? They're like, you talking to my girlfriend? This kid's like seven. These people are in their twenties and they drag him down into a sewer, hold him under a pipe, turn it on and waterboard this kid. And practically like she's screaming, like you're going to kill him. You're going to kill him. And you're like, what children's movie have I stumbled into? I love that one of those bullies has previously been down in that sewer and was like, huh, a turn on a pipe. That'll come into play later. But I got to remember that. I'm surprised one of these bullies wasn't wearing 3D glasses because that's. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing that gets me is like in the Stephen King movies, right? They're bullies like so bullying. But in this movie, they don't give a shit about anything. Like Laurie Strode yells at them and they immediately like, ooh, Michael Myers is like, what 18 year old kid is going to do that to an older? Like, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it seems pretty heavy. At the end of the movie, they like invade this mechanic shop junkyard to fuck shit up. And they're yelling, cursing and stealing cars and shit. And you're like, there's a grown up in there. And like, they don't care at all. And you're like, really? Like, it just seemed very heavy handed over the top. They're like, we need people who will root for them to die. Great. Congratulations. You did it. But like fucking weird. What weird non care Because they're not even characters. What are they? Oh, they're mean band kids. Yeah. Really? B- band geeks? They're not even like big jocks? Like band geeks, really? Those are the ki- Those are the people. And like these kids aren't even big. They don't even seem mean. Like all he had to do was like, Ugh. anyway, Lori Strode, grandma scares him off. And she's like, oh, you hurt your hand. You want to bang my granddaughter? And he's like, no. And she's like, come on. <laughs> and she takes him to the hospital. Well, at least come for the stitches. Yeah, she takes him to the clinic where her, her granddaughter, who's now a nurse, um, and immediately, immediately, she's like, oh, my God. Oh, I love, I love little geeks. I love losers who get picked on by band geeks. Oh, my God, my fucking aphrodisiac. <laughs> and she gets fucking hot for this guy and immediately wants to like fix his wounded baby bird yeah. fucking bullshit. And is like, now we're dating. And he's like, are we? And like, he is so fucking pathetic. This entire movie. It's painful how pathetic he is. And this like Hollywood movie hot chick is like, Oh my God, I have to fix you. And Lori's like, this is cute. I, I you think don't even go well. see like she walks into the room and suddenly just starts doing that. There's really nothing to indicate to the audience that she feels a certain way about him for a certain reason. It's like almost like there was a scene where they meet each other or she sees him get picked on or something, but she just kind of walks in and falls in love with him mid scene or mid line. And you just got to roll with it. And you're like, okay, it's a worse introduction than Marty McFly to his mom. (laughs) <laughs> and that was played for jokes. So once again, back to your point, is this played for jokes? Is Are you playing a joke on us? Hey, all you people who showed up to see Michael Myers? It, 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 and that's the thing is that it's a movie. It feels competently made. It doesn't feel like when you watch, I keep saying The Room, but when you watch The Room, you know that the driver of that bus had never been on a bus before. <laughs> Right. This movie was a movie. It was working as a movie, but then it would do something. It's almost like when you're in a room or at a party and someone says something weird, not bad, not awkward, not terrible, but like the way humans don't talk. And like you and I would look at each other and be like, did you hear what Dildo Sarah just said? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Because it's like, I, I, that's not how, that's not when you play by the rules, that's not how it is. And this movie breaks a couple of conventions that are just, Odd filmmaking convention. So uh, the worst part comes up in a second. So she's like, let's go dance. He's like, no, I really don't want to. And she's like, you're coming. She fucking bullies this guy into dating her. 
she doesn't have to bully very hard. He wants it. Man, man. Like, she's gorgeous. Leave her, leave her I, alone. I, oh my <laughs> God. So she takes him dancing to a scene that takes way too fucking long. Oh, uh, there's great. a lot of dancing. Hold on. Now the fire alarms are going off because the pot smokers upstairs can't fucking stop smoking weed. So let's see if I have to evacuate for fire. <laughs> Time out. I honestly, so if you guys are watching the YouTube, there's like lights flashing in roomies. And I honestly thought it was like a visual bit you were this doing. happens every night because people smoke in their rooms and they're not supposed to. You, oh, Where are you? In wah, a, wah, a, a wah, apartment? Stupid character moment alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all you would hear this entire fucking movie. Um, so she takes him dumb dancing and Corey runs into the parents of the kid he killed, which is, you know, what happens when you don't move the fuck out of this fucking town and everyone behaves like they're in a movie. N- n- he he runs outside and is like, I'm mad. And the and he, Allison runs out and she's like, why are you mad? And he's like, I'm mad because I'm I'm extra mad and runs off like nobody behaves this way. Can All I he tell you? Just this is made so, no sense. This if you haven't scene. seen the scene in the scene, she's dancing with him and he finally starts to loosen up. Yeah. And as he starts to loosen up, he <laughs> walks over. He walks away from her. She's on the dance floor. Where is the dance floor usually located in a party space? Like in, the in the middle, the middle of, the of the fucking room. room. Yeah. He walks away from that to the bar to get a drink because he's feeling good. He bumps into this mom whose kid he killed and she immediately pounces on him. He runs outside. The girl follows and he's going I'm not your fucking project. He goes, you threw me in the middle of that. No, you were in the middle dancing. And then he goes, where were you? What do you mean? Where were you? You walked away from her. She was in the middle. You walked away to get a beer. It's not her fault. It just feels very much like Anakin and Padme romance where it's just like they love each other. And you're like, okay, why? And they're like, cause they're in love. This is like, they're, they're having some strife. Okay, well, why? It's also like, why don't you say things like a normal person? All you had to say is like, I ran into the mom of the kid who died in my care. I'm, that That's pretty triggering for me. I'm fucked up right now. And she would have been like, oh, I'm so sorry. Do you want to leave the party? And he's like, yeah, I guess I do. But instead, he's like, leave me alone. Wham. Like, Why'd you do this to me? Yeah. like She was like, dude, well, as dancing. far as she knows, all like, yeah, as far as she knows, he was dancing, went to get a drink and then bolted. Right. I don't remember yeah. if she saw the mom yelling or not. It, it, it nobody's behaving like human beings. Nobody, t- nobody has conversations like that. That's true. Nobody has an argument like that. If anybody actually behaves like that, she'd been like, "All right, later, loser," and they wouldn't have a relationship. Yet she's still like, "Okay, you're gonna call me later or what?" And it's like, mm-hmm. "What the fuck?" So he stomps off like a little bitch. Mm-hmm. Eh, I'm mad. Walking across and then, this bridge. Uh oh. Here come the band geeks. Dun, 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 dun. Like you needed a theme song for that. You remember Power Rangers? Did you ever watch the original Power Rangers? Yeah. When the bad guys, Bulk and Skull, would show up, this music would come on. And like that's the the music that the bullies are coming. It's like in one of the other Halloween movies when the cops show up and it's like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and like the goofy music. You know that like there needed to be this like fucking butthead music to come on. So you'd be like, oh, oh here come those band geeks. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. And they bully him up some more. It's just stupid because it's poorly written. There's no reason for it. And it's just dumb as shit. And they throw him off a bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, God. Like, that's literally exactly what and it. <laughs> and it, it didn't like that scene. If that's what you want to happen, that could have happened in a much more believable way without much more effort. You know what I mean? It's not like they were like, you know what? They could we're have not devoting forty five minutes. Of, just try to hit him with the car. They should oh, roll yeah. up. <laughs> you didn't even have to have car. a scene. No, we didn't have to have a scene. Well, I you wanted even... this is. It's. I guess I would make the argument just to be devil's advocate that it's slightly important that Corey tries to stand up to them. Because he stands up to them and he says, um, your dad hates you. Because we saw the head bully's dad, who's the headest bully of them all, smacking the bully in the head in front of all the mechanics at the mechanic shop. And he, because my stupid son, whack, doesn't know how to change a tire. Because that's how people act. Okay, fine. So he says, I know what hate looks like and your dad fucking hates you. And that's what makes the bullies throw him over. So I would make the argument that that scene exists because we have to see Corey trying to stand up for himself. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but I'm going to say that's what a filmmaker would would say. Argue okay. For it. All right. But I mean, like, but again, there's like, easier ways to do that. There's better ways to do that. There's sure. better ways to do that. You you did it in a way that nobody would ever do. Like you, like I don't know, like I don't know how you come up with scenes 
that aren't human. Like, like <laughs> how did how did it's this like happen? a bot wrote that scene, right? A bot then wrote four this bullies, bot, movie. four bullies bully someone. Bully's dad, also a bully, smacks his head, <laughs> right? <laughs> Bully's dad gives Bully a noogie. And then they run away. The kids run away for half, half the Oh, so, they pulled a knife. There was a knife yeah. involved, which I guess is important if we're going step by step, but yeah. So they throw him over the bridge, and we see him get dragged into a sewer tunnel. This is almost 37 minutes into the movie. Mm-hmm. We've had, and, but it explains at least explains where Pennywise has been the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. So we've had, <laughs> we've had one kill and two bodies that we saw in a montage with the voiceover that really didn't matter. And I won't count his kills. I refuse. Horrible. So they get dragged into the sewer, and he wakes up there, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, creepy sewer. And he's about to walk out when this hand comes out, bum, 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 grabs him. And it's Michael Myers. But he's like crusty and old. And he's like looking at him. And Corey looks at him. And they look at each other deeply in the eyes. And they lean in to kiss. Yeah, turn the head. Yeah, I was going to say, turn the head like this. And yep. you see a little pink tongue come out from the, <laughs> from the William Shatner lips. <laughs> and they kiss. And it's this beautiful love story. Uh, much better than the one this movie's trying to put out. This is the better part. This is the better love story of the movie. I do later refer to a murder scene involving both of them as a murder threesome. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you picked up on that because I did too. Yeah. not But it wasn't subtle, please. Um, not so, subtle at all. But like, so so what happens, the way, the way uh, uh, Michael Myers grabs him by the throat, kind of like through a crack in the sewer, like, one of those sewer cracks. I <laughs> yeah. guess it's near the turn onable pipes. And he's choking him, and you think he's gonna kill Corey or Corey's gonna escape, but then they they pull push in on both of their eyes. And in Corey's eyes, you Corey's eye, you see Michael Myers' mask. And then you kind of see like all the shit that happened to Corey, like all the bullying and nonsense and the kid falling. You even see a couple shots of the kid's death from the first scene in different shots than we saw it. So it's new. But very quick, glimpse, 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 glimpse. So they mind meld, basically. Right, exactly. Um, you and know, like like Michael in all Myers the other movies. That's what Michael Myers does, you know, right. in all the movies that we've seen him mind meld with people. Have we ever seen Michael Myers mind meld with somebody before? We, we saw Michael mind meld Myers somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've never seen Michael Myers mind meld before. It's his new power. It's his new power that he got. He leveled um, up. In the four years after he slaughtered 36 people on screen, he hasn't killed anybody else. He's been hiding in the sewer and fed beans by a homeless guy. No, he has. Well, so so as this happens, as Corey kind of stumbles backwards from this mind meld, he crawls out and Michael Myers doesn't follow him. And as he crawls out, there's a jump scare where the homeless guy runs up behind Corey and he's like, How, how'd you get out of there? He's like, he takes peace. And I watched this for a reason. I watched it with subtitles on. He, the homeless guy says, he takes people in there from time to time. Why did he let you out? Why did he let you in? And then the old guy has found the knife that the bullies threw down there. And he says, I'm Michael Myers. He's not done with you. I don't know what that, I mean, I, I have a couple ideas based on the ending, but like I have a couple ideas of what that means, but it doesn't make any sense. And Corey and him stumble into each other and they do that thing with, oh, we both, got stabbed or one of us did but you don't uh yeah it's the old homeless guy he gets oh stabbed. it's so cliche we are now an hour into this movie and there's been two, like this is the <laughs> uh, the second death of the movie and it's a homeless guy and it's not michael myers hasn't killed anybody yet what at this point i'm screaming what movie am i watching what is this movie if this was a normal movie and Michael Myers wasn't in it, I'm still not on board. You haven't done anything to make me go, hmm, interesting. So far, it's been a kid getting picked on who has now stabbed a homeless dude. Way to punch By down. By accident, like, kind of. Okay, well, still, you're punching right. down, asshole. Um, so he stumbles <laughs> off. He stumbles off and immediately finds his girlfriend, Allison. And is like, I killed a homeless guy. And No, she, no, he didn't say that. Hold on. He explains to her that he killed somebody and she has no fucking reaction. My wife has had bigger reactions to my farts. She has Your literally no reaction. farts have more people than this movie. She, I, it, 100%. <laughs> she literally has, she's just like, okay, 
we're still dating though, right? Like she doesn't even give a fuck that he just told her that he murdered somebody. How he does goes he do back, it? Yeah. He goes back to her. Yeah. And there's a very Michael Myers scene where he's standing kind of behind a bush. And immediately, immediately, Laurie Strode recognizes that he's different. Immediately. She's upstairs in a room looking down and he's standing behind a bush, very reminiscent of shots from the first one. And then he goes downstairs. They have a conversation together and she knows he is different. And we see that through how she's acting. But then in the next scene, she also says it to somebody else. He goes to the girl because the girl, as far as 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 he knows, as far as she knows, the girl, uh, as far as the girl knows, he just ran away. Right. When he he said, why'd you do this to me? He pooped his pants, pissed his little diaper and took off. He said, I got beat up last night. I got jumped. I stood up to them and they jumped. They threw me off this brick. She doesn't tell about the Michael Myers shit. And then he goes, can we go for a walk? And they go for a walk. And he looks at her and is like, I killed. Uh, I think he's, he's either said I killed someone or I murdered someone is what he says. Yeah. And, and then she it has cuts no to no fucking she has reaction. no reaction. It cuts to them going into the house, the now abandoned house that he babysat and accidentally killed yeah. that kid in. Yeah. So I want to go see the house where I accidentally killed it, where I, where I broke the number two rule of babysitting. He was like, ah, <laughs> but I, I'm thinking that he, and this doesn't make her lack of reaction much better, but I think he was trying to tell her I killed somebody playing it off as the kid. And he brought her to this house and they talk, you know, they have more bullshit talking that makes you think, okay, you guys are in love or whatever. Even if we're supposed to believe that she thinks or he wants her to think or something is inferred that it was the kid, like, duh, she lives in the town. She knows who you are. You're kind of a local celebrity. I mean, like, like I duh. think that was again. And I, I'm, I might be giving this movie more credit than it deserves, but I thought he like in my mind, he wanted to confess that he killed the homeless person, but he didn't want to tell her he killed the homeless person. So instead, he vaguely admitted a murder and brought her back there, which she probably took as soul bearing, which made her that much more wet for his hard little boy. This is so terrible for me. It's still fucking dumb. I agree. But at this point, I don't know if I just had nothing to do that night or what, but I was I was giving it a lot of slack and I was okay. I wanted it to go somewhere. It was one of those things where like, not a good storyteller per se, but like they're telling this story and they're telling it in a way that is very different than what I expected. Very different than the norm, not just for a Halloween movie, but for a slasher in general. I didn't think they were telling a bad story, except they were doing these things where like people weren't acting like people in these discussions. You're like, why would you feel that way about him? Then Lori clearly knows he's evil or something and just stands by and you're like, why how, are you doing this? How are we giving, how are you at this point in the, how are you giving it any credit at this because point? Because I'm, I guess, because I had faith, right or wrong, I had faith that they were going to be like, because this, like they were going to yeah, try to but show when me that something. didn't happen, shouldn't you just be like, oh, I was wrong, this movie sucks? Like, well, why, why ju- is it at the end that people are still walking away and be like, well, they tried to do something different. Yeah, but they failed. Yeah, but at least they tried. No, no, no. Halloween 3 tried something and failed. This movie is a fucking failure, but Halloween three fucking rocks. I like movies that are failures. I've watched plenty of them. I've spent thousands of dollars on DVDs for movies that are failures. At well, this trying failed something. badly. Like this Halloween three fa- failed up, right? Yeah. They tried to make a horror movie. It wasn't scary, but it's fun. I tried to do they tried to make different? this a horror movie or a Halloween movie. Yeah. The last quarter of it delivers on what we all wanted. Halloween Kills tried to do something different and y'all shat on it. Halloween Ends tried to do something that we'd seen before and the Joker was a better movie. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, it's just, it's, it, I was so, there, there were no balloon bumps for an hour of this film except I after would, the kid fell I would for, give you that off I would give you that nothing There's, there were no blue maybe I was just in a good mood or I was excited to see it or something you were in I a just, theater it, it, it the, this is why the people want you to go to theater because if you're in a movie theater 
and you're like watching it with people, you you like get a there's a there's a freebie balloon bump for you to keep the movie riding because you're like, yeah, this is fun. I'm in a movie with people. There's lights. There's popcorn. I'm having a soda. <laughs> I'm over forty and I'm not home in bed and it's a it's past eight o'clock. Yay, yay, <laughs> right? So. I, I don't know, like, the, the, from this point on, I'm so off of it. Like, the scenes kind of get jumbled. They go to dinner is my next scene that I paid yes. attention now, to. Yes, now this, this is a very important part for me. The dinner or the part afterwards when they have the a fucking, okay. They go to dinner and this cop who is her ex-boyfriend is like, hey, babe, you didn't call me. You want to call me tomorrow? You're going to call me tonight? What are, we, what are we doing? And he's like, such a yippy skippy piece. He's just, he's a boner. I don't like him. And Corey reacts like a boner too and everybody's just it's just a scene well everyone's boners. an absolute dick like over the top dick to Corey, right yeah. oh it's the murderer oh it's the murderer oh, mur- what's up freak shit it's like guys i fucking like does everyone say that to his face in real like in real that's, life that's how it would be like that's the bully i believe though i don't buy the band geeks for one second no 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 this guy but was I, a better bully but i like, buy him as a bully he at least is the biggest bully of the movie that works and the and Corey jumps up in his face, and the the cop backs down because this is the ex boyfriend is a cop, right? Yeah. For no reason. Yeah, for no reason. Ma- makes no difference. Now, well, do you have more to say about this scene before I get into the most important part, probably of the whole movie? Really? Uh, n- yeah. uh, no, other than everybody's a dick to him. Go ahead. Everyone's a dick to him. This cop is at this burger place eating dinner. Do you know why he's there? It's it's Joey Joey Fat Joey's birthday. Yeah, Fat Joey's or whoever Joey's birthday. From the force, and he points at a bunch of kind of burly looking guys who probably are cops sitting at a table, fucking around, drinking beers, eating burgers. And you know, uh, Corey jumps up, gets in his face, and this guy is like, "Hey, hey, easy, man! I'm just just fucking with you, man." And he goes back and sits down. As he goes back and sits down, the one of the other cops is like, "What's going on, man?" He's like, "No, nah, don't worry about it. Let it go." And he's like, "We got to go kick somebody's ass." He's like, "No, nah, man, it's not worth it." So it's like a bunch of tough guys at a table. The problem is, on the table, there is a birthday gift bag, and suspended above it is a birthday balloon. Do grown men give each other balloons? I'm 40 years old. I don't think I've ever given another man a balloon. <laughs> How are you going to know it's his birthday? I turned to the person next to me, and I was like, do grown men give each other balloons? And she was like, I don't think so. And I swear to God, it is like, it's like when you watch a John Wayne cowboy movie and a fucking plane flies in the background. You're like, wait, what? And I'm not going to talk about like what's right or wrong or what's manly or not. I just don't think I've ever seen a bunch of men go out to celebrate someone's birthday and they get him one gift bag that has a like Mylar birthday balloon that says happy birthday. I don't think grown men do that. So no joke. At this point, I'm like, this is like not Earth 6, uh, 616, right? This is a different planet. This is like a different Marvel universe, right? And after we smash these burgers, we're going back to Joey's house. We're going to do our fingers, do our nails, cuddle up in our sleeping bags. And we're watching Tom Hanks movies. And they're like, yeah. don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep again first, Henry. <laughs> but I was just, I, I seriously was like, who? Like someone put that there. Yeah, that was an art direction. That was a decision. Art direction. Somebody was, was like, hey, somebody was paid to go and buy that balloon. Just like the bullies. There were some, one of them had a marching uniform on. And you're like, but that's every movie I've ever seen has shown me that marching band are dorks. They're not bullies, but this movie was not making a statement. Oh, I, actually, I guess it was. I guess, I guess this movie is trying to say everyone could be evil, right? Anyone now, can be evil. Anyone can be evil. It's fucking dumb. Except cops. They give birthday balloons. They give birthday balloons. Hey, Here's happy birthday, Joey! David Gordon Green, the director of this movie, had to have a meeting that probably took an hour and a half out of somebody else's time to pick the balloon for the table, the and they showed him multiple <laughs> options. And then when he picked the balloon that he wanted, somebody had to go out to the store and find multiples of that exact balloon in case this balloon popped. <sighs> They had to have somebody on set to blow that balloon up, probably with a big tank of air that they rented for this very purpose. (laughs) But like, I just like that really like what the fuck is. And there's so much more that happens both before and after this that you're like, but why is that like there's a whole DJ character 
Oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, like they Will play him kid? up like something matters, and he gets killed, and it's a cool enough death. This, but like, uh, who is he in the movie? He's not important in any respect. He's not, and he's the first voice you hear in the movie. Hey, it's Willie Kid here, pulling down some slick tunes. Uh, I'm going to spit out some bullshit about Michael Myers, and nobody likes me. But I still have a radio, sh- a terrestrial radio show with an antenna on top. Um, you know, because that's how <laughs> radio fucking works, guys. Um, it's all internet now. I, I hate to break it to you. That's not like any any. It's all done on the internet. If you have a terrestrial <laughs> radio show, you're definitely not playing tunes. You're talking about Martians and shit. Like, and I guess he kind of is that character, but um, he sucks too. He's kind. Of, he reminds me of Barry. Barry rocks. Remember Barry? Well, from- but, but Barry was a character that was an ongoing thing in that movie that they built up, built up, built up. Then Barry is in the movie. And becomes a character and eventually becomes a kill. And he is a character that you want to see killed because he's kind of a scumbag. Yeah. This guy is just like, I'm saying things in the background that make no difference. And they're not, there's no stakes or consequences. Then he comes out and threatens the main characters. He goes back inside and he gets murdered. And you're like, why? Like, why did Michael Myers even murder them? It doesn't make any sense. But It doesn't make any sense. But. Darcy, the male girl, is his manager, producer, or somebody else who works there, and she's on screen for one second. Who is she? Darcy, the male girl. She is on Joe Bob Briggs' The Last Drive-In. She's his oh, like, okay. co-host. Um, I figured she, she was somebody, but yeah, she's she's a she's a very recognizable uh, person in the horror community, and it's awesome that she's in a Halloween movie. Good for her, and she gets an off-screen death. What the fuck? You have yeah. Darcy the male girl, and you're that's like that's like the equivalent of n- not at the end. She's not as big as Elvira, but like you have a huge right. someone who was recognizable, her name recognizable to a community, and then you're like killed off screen, yeah, like, in one shot or two. I think she was two shots, yeah, she's in like two shots. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, yeah. uh, after the police birthday party, um. They're, 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 the Corey and, and the girl, Allison, are talking about burning the world down. We're going to burn this town down, burn yeah. this world. I'm like, burn great. Everything I saw down. Heathers. Heathers was sure. a better movie than this. Yeah. Heathers is great. This sucks. He drops her home, and the cop is following him. He, dr- he brings the cop back to the sewer. He <sighs> fights the cop for a quick second, lures the cop in. Into the, the Michael Myers sewer. You know, into Pennywise's Penny- sewer. Yeah, sewer. Pennywise. Now, th- he, they're like grappling together, and... Corey has to help Michael Myers because Michael Myers is so old, decrepit, out of it, whatever. But Corey helps him by hitting the guy with a flashlight. And then he says, show me, show me how it's done or some bullshit like that. Yeah, And they proceed to have a murder threesome. Yeah. Oh, so it's in there. Michael Myers pulls out a rusty knife from the wall, which I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I wrote murder threesome, rusty knife. (laughs) Well, here's what I wrote. The symbolism <laughs> is not lost. Michael stabs the man off screen while Corey cradles in his lap. And the gush of blood is, well, you know, the movie Necromantic. <laughs> the blood did is we come. Watch that together. Yeah, yeah, we did. We, we, we watched that. <laughs> yeah. The blood is come. And it, that's what it means. That, and, and the symbolism is so over the head. And literally when he pulls the knife out and the blood is gushing from between Corey's legs, he goes, uh, 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 oh, for uh, sure. Like totally, totally has an O face. Maybe that's maybe that's why I give this movie more credit than I it should have. Maybe I was a little turned on. <laughs> maybe maybe it was a little sexier than I thought it. Like all those marks against it, but it was the sexiest Michael Myers movie I it ever saw. It was yeah. This is the only one we ever saw Michael Myers get laid in. Um, <laughs> and then he and Corey are buddies now. They're best friends, and they hold hands and take skippy walks through the forest to murder together. Together. Um, oof. Or he goes home, yes. bones Allison. Yep. Right? And not only does it bone Allison, um, Lori stands outside of her house and watches the two of them go up the stairs. I literally just realized this. Just like Michael Myers watched his sister go upstairs. So yep. Lori knows that Michael, uh, that Corey is like different or infected somehow by evil or suspicious. Sus- suspicious? Supposes it? She's suspicious about it. Suspects. That's what I'm looking for. She suspects that he's evil or different, <laughs> but she watches and allows them to just go upstairs and bone home. So, like, in her house, and she just watches through the window. Yeah. And Michael Myers watches her. So dumb. So dumb. I'm I wrote, why is Lori cuckolding? I wrote that in my notes. <laughs> Got somebody always watching you. So, 
Corey wakes up from that, grabs his skeleton, uh, a scarecrow mask from his dance party, and leaves. And then we see this nurse character who it can, makes can, no sense. I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little fast forward because none of it matters. It's all fucking stupid. Wait, but I like the doctor scene. You didn't think oh, the doctor scene was good? We're going to get to it. Oh, okay. We cut to doctor coming home with this hot nurse, Deb, who he's like, I gave you that promotion. Ha ha ha. And she's like, oh, Dr. Mantis, I'm going to go take a shower. And he's like, I'm going to pop this champagne. And they're like, and you're like, okay, this guy's a douche. <laughs> she sucks. She's like, I'm going to go take a shower. And he like got her this like awesome night robe. And she's like, Dr. Mantis, Dr. Mantis. She says his name way too many times. And I'm like, bitch, you <laughs> well, are yeah, about you to that. bone this guy. How are you not on a first day bath it? Because Dr. Mathis likes that. That's, Dr. Mathis that's a, likes it. His power um, play. He doesn't even get a fucking name on IMDb. He's Dr. Mathis because they never give him a name. If you're about to get dicked down, you know their first name, I hope. And if you don't, I'm sorry. But I, I would have guessed that if you're going to his house and he's giving you robes and shit, you know his first name. It's just so fucking annoying to have her being like, Dr. Mathis? Clearly, you've never fucked a doctor, Rumi. It's about respect. About You respect, respect the title, not oh. the man. Well, she says Salute his the name title, too many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rumi hates it when a character in a movie says another character's name too many times. Too many times. When they're wandering through the house being like, Billy? Billy? And you're like, just get murdered already. Because that, that's let's just, just, just what you, I want to hit fill it fast forward. Just get to the murder. Because that is intention to me. Don't say right. their name. Just like stop saying names and just keep looking. Because every time you say their name again, like honestly, like if I come home, I'm like, Kate, you home? Okay, cool. <laughs> looking, looking. I don't say her name multiple times because she obviously didn't hear, hear me the first time. <laughs> saying the name five feet from where I just said it, she's not going to suddenly hear me. Usually I just call her all of a sudden like, oh, I'm just going to pull out my phone. Doo, 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 doo. Why are you calling me from the house? Oh, I just didn't know where you were. Oh, I didn't hear I you. I don't want to say your name five times. I didn't want to say your name because I get annoyed. I want to get, but if I said your name more than once, I would want somebody to hop out and murder me. Okay, that's all. That's, that's just what's happening. <laughs> I like in those same scenes when they say, when there's two characters and something, the noise happens and one character asks another character, what was that? I don't know, bitch, I'm standing here too. I was <laughs> in the, I, I know the exact same amount of information as you do. Uh, noise. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm right so here. she walks out and Dr. Math is getting stabbed by a scarecrow. And suddenly you're like, oh, my God, this is like the fourth or fifth kill in this movie. And it's still not Michael Myers. And he tries to chase her. And it's obvious that she's going to, like, kick this kid's ass if he tries to stab her. And she locks she slams the door on his hand and and she locks the door and he's watching her. And then. Ooh, who's that in the background? It's I my sidekick, Michael Myers. Did you see that coming? I didn't. Yes. I was like, I was in the scene. I I, I thought that was a fine scene. I, I, thought, I absolutely. Not great. I'm not saying the, it's great. But the I was second fun she went inside and locked him out, I was like, Michael Myers will be in there. And now they're sidekicks. Like I was, it was it, obviously that that's what's happening because this kid sucks. And if we don't get Michael Myers in this movie in the next 30 seconds, <laughs> this movie's I'm just, I have to turn it off. I'm stomping away across the bridge. I eh, 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 hope eh, no eh. police You're going to look at home. Kate and be like, I'm not your fucker with Halloween project. So why'd you bring me in the middle of this? Michael Myers stabs her with like, I don't know, the tiniest blade possible and it suspends her in midair. It's the rusty I, one. He stabs her through like the oh, first one and she's I thought suspended. it was like he, he pulled like a toothpick from the bar and like stabbed her and it held her. No, it was his look, rusty ass knife, I think. I know that it's the most iconic thing that Michael Myers can do, but it's also fucking stupid. You can't suspend somebody from their rib cage with a knife in the wall. It's been dumb since the first one. It's his most iconic kill. It's still dumb. Maybe Michael Myers is dumb. Like, that's what this movie is doing to me. Like... <laughs> It was not a good kill in the first movie. It was the only the it was the only good kill in the first movie. But like, it's not a great. Like, it's just it defies physics in a way that is ridiculous. And there's plenty there's so of movies much, that defy well, physics in ridiculous ways. And he so he stabs her against the poster. Just hey, remember that first movie you saw? He might as well just put on "Wake Me Up" before you you know some other like they might as well have done this in a blockbuster roomie he's just playing the hits at this point just stabs her against the wall she's hanging there and he does the head turn and like Corey comes again he's like oh yeah puts his hand against the door like he was fucking jack and titanic he loves it and now they're best friends and i'm just i was so so over it at this point so <laughs> like the balloon was on the floor and i was the Pennywise balloon. <laughs> the Pennywise balloon was sucked into the vacuum, and I was having to take the vacuum apart to get it out. That's how low I was at this point in the film. 
So you liked it. You were like, this is, they're trying something it, different. It wasn't good. Like, I like, well, no, that's, I dis, I disagree. It was good. There was nothing wrong with that scene. Is it, is it one of the kills that we wanted to be in the end of this trilogy and in the, what would this be? The 17th Michael Meyer movie? No, it should have been better. The scene worked. And I don't just mean like I give it a passing grade, like a 65. It did everything right. I understand the context of the greater Michael Myers story. We're disappointed ultimately, but I'm like the chest suspending thing. I agree that it doesn't work, but do like, you, do you want his most iconic kill to be somebody that but, we don't give a shit about in the no, movie? No, but like Ghostface killed uh, Tatum in a garage door. That's not how garage doors work, but it's like, fuck it, man. It's a movie. And once you start pulling sure. that stuff apart, I think that's like threads of a shirt. You start I, pulling that shit. It but pulls that's apart, the thing. Right? When, the, when the balloon's on the floor, the, th- the threads Fair. are all out. It's, it's, the threads are Fair. falling apart at this point. I was I fine with that. I don't mind in the first Halloween film and even the subsequent film where he does the stab him against the wall and they suspend there. It doesn't bug me when it when the movie's working. But this movie yeah, is. Yeah, I guess is, that makes All right. This, that's. This, That's this fair. movie's burning in the trash and suddenly it farted at me. <laughs> so even if it's like that smell wouldn't normally offend me, I've smelled plenty of farts. Normally I'm just like, whatever, that's a bodily function. But this one was like, oh, you know that you all of our all of our house? listeners right now are going, man, they are bringing up farts a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I had some um, salami for lunch and it's working its way. <laughs> I watched this in the movie theater on Friday. But then once you texted me over the weekend, do you want to review Halloween sucks? I was like, you didn't like it. You're like, I fucking hated it. I was like, oh man, I got to be on, on my point here. Cause I didn't think it was that bad. Let me watch it and see if I hated it. I watched it again last night. I still don't hate it, but I noticed some things in this scene when she walks out looking for Dr. Whatever his name is, Dr. Matthew. as she walks out into the courtyard area where the doctor was last seen as she walks out, not lit in the background, you can see, uh, if you know what it is, you can see a stabbing motion. I thought that was fucking cool. And that if I, I didn't notice that the first time. Yeah, I also saw Michael Myers walking underneath the overpass in an earlier scene, which I didn't see in the theaters, but I noticed it at home. I like those little type of things, and I thought that they were effective for what they were. I thought this scene worked fine. And then when he took the mask off and he was orgasming on the window while he watched Michael Myers, I realized that this kid, Corey, the actor, and I looked him up later. I don't recognize him from anything. He did a good job, but the character was inconsistent because he plays a whiny little bitch pretty well. He also Great. plays, <laughs> but he did a good job. You don't have to like it, but he did I, a good job at the character. I, I'm, I'm then not the couple times, any, I'm not There's a couple times the actors, where he has this uh, evil know. in him now. And he's talking about burning the world down and he yeah. mouths off to the cop and he's, you know, cursing, whatever. And he gets scary or just gets creepy when he first talks to Lori after he's got the evil in him. It's creepy. And I was like, okay, show, like to me, I guess that was a balloon pop. It's not very good. I, I sh- I'm not defending it. But to me, I was like, okay, where are you going with this kid in this story? Uh, I think all the actors were fine. I had zero problems with it. And like, there's been plenty of movies with worse actors and, sure. and, and they've uh, yeah. been more satisfying than this. Um, it, it, so I don't know what happens immediately after this. Cause at this point I was so pissed off. Th- this is probably the best orchestrated scene in the movie. Like with the, like, Oh, it, who's it going to be? Oh, it's going to be the kid. Well, you know, anyway, I, I agree that the it doctor was, scene you mean? The doctor scene in his house was fairly well organized. Yeah. Um, as as far as horror films go, but it was already like it 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 couldn't save itself because it was already Fair. It, okay. It, I can understand I, that. I'm already over it. Like that. At, yeah. By the time you're getting to something that's good, that's a good horror slasher movie set piece, even if it is cliche, which. Look, I'll, I, I've watched every Friday the Thirteenth multiple times. They every movie is just a rehash cliche of itself, and I love it. Nom 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 nom. All the Halloween movies are cliches <laughs> of themselves. Nom 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 nom. I eat it up. This one couldn't even save itself by being like, "Oh wait, the the, the dish you do like." Here's the thing you do like. You want some of that? And I was like, no. I'm not yeah, hungry. <laughs> I'm not even hungry. We go I'm not hungry anymore. Of, yeah. Uh, my diaper's already full enough. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know what happens after this, but the next moment that, that made me like lose my shit is 
I want you to imagine this, Rumi. You're a 13 year old. Oh man, I love it. Your brother is maybe 12. And you have this bitch and murder mask that's the coolest hot new toy. And your brother bursts into your room, slaps the shit out of you. He's like, Mom, give me the give me the mask. Give me the mask, man. And he's like, Mom, Matt won't let me use the murder mask. And like mom Myers pops out and she's got the white mask on, but like with like big bubbles. <laughs> yeah. And she's holding She kind of looks casserole. like Leatherface, but yeah. without the makeup. And she's got an apron on and she's holding a casserole. And she's like, Michael, you let little Maddie. Use the murder mask for one night. He's like, oh, fucking fine. It was like two little brothers fighting over the Nintendo controller. He literally slap fights the shit out of Michael Myers and steals the mask. You got your ass kicked by band geeks, and now you're slapping the shit out of a guy who killed 36 people with his bare hands in the last Because he's evil now. He wasn't oh, evil when the band beat him up. I don't give a shit. I don't care. He couldn't, he couldn't do it then. Also, anybody who's touched Michael Myers' mask gets their arms ripped out of their socket, and he just lets this kid slap the shit out of him. Like the the guy who's been an unstoppable juggernaut killing machine didn't just just gets gets like slap fighted like it's not even a fight he's just like, give it to me give it ah! like literally he's like give me give me give me and takes it from him you, you how were you not crack I was howling like I thought it was funny I was like at least <laughs> this is hysterical this kid just slap fought Michael Myers and he let him take his mask how were you guys not cracking the fuck up in the movie theater? I would have thought the entire theater would have been laughing. To the There's only they... four people in the entire theater. So that was part that of tracks. It. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure producers are like, Hey, as long as we got Jamie Lee Curtis and a mask and a knife, we'll make a fuck ton of money. This movie has bombed rightfully. So it's a Is piece true? of shit. Yeah. It's bombed horribly. I also legit wonder if that has anything to do with releasing it at the same time on Peacock. And at this point, like we can all just watch it at home for free or, you know, for the streaming service. Yeah, as opposed to going the in the theater. I paid four ninety nine. How much did you pay? Uh, fourteen. Yeah. Um, I like the like if the movie didn't suck already, he literally stole his mask and he lived. Come on. Well. Okay. Stay of execution. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Like so. St- no, not even a stay of execution. Michael Myers didn't kill him. That kid's bleeding out to death anyway. Can, should we just skip to that part? Like, like what is anything hap- happen after this? Yeah. It's important well, to talk about. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. The entire murder spree at the dump at the mechanic area. Oh yeah. That didn't do anything for you. <laughs> yeah. That, but it, you, like, we already, already I mean, I understand it's not going to say it's already anything, done. Okay. But I could guess you give that to... scene credit for what the scene was and the kill? Yeah. I okay. thought there were some good kills there. The, they are the best kills of the movie. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I think, I mean, that girl gets, there's a girl climbing a fence he hits her with a truck and you watch the body and the fence go under the truck. And I was like, and it was the girl who was sympathetic to him. She didn't really do anything, but she was the one that didn't want them to hurt him. Yeah. 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 He runs her down. You're like, Oh shit. Then when he's killing another girl, you realize she's still alive. She watches one or two friends get murdered. Then he comes over and smashes her face with his foot and you watch him get scrushed. And I was like, first I was like, wow, that was a brutal kill when the truck hits her. And then I was like, then she's like, oh, I'm alive and I'm trapped. I'm like, oh, you're taking the pansy way out because she was the good one. You're not going to kill her. Then he boots her to the face and her face blows apart. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Then he gets in the truck and drives away. And as he drives away, they make a point to show him running her over again. Squish, squish, and I was like, yeah. she was the good one. Okay. She was the good one. Uh, the boyfriend who was, in the, who was the main bully, he gets like a acetylene torch to the face. We don't get to see it, but. We sort of see, we get enough. We do get enough I think it's it. effective. I think yep. any more it would have looked fake and it would have looked too much or too mm. real and it wouldn't have been as enjoyable. Yeah, what do as you think it was, this is? I think Terrifier you watch her watch too? him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, yes, that scene in any other horror movie would have probably been a good balloon bop, but like it was, it was a dumpster fire at this point. Like I can't see the flames from the flames. Well, you get the, 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 the guys and his credit is Donald. His Donald, who dad? may or may not be his dad or his boss or his and, and the mom kisses him on the lips at one point, And you're like, is this his real parents or is the mom his real mom? She refers to herself as his mother. Yeah. But the dad, the, the guy, Donald, is like a pretty cool character. We just don't know who the fuck he is, which is so weird. It's a, so just a weird, weird way to have a and he has like multiple things to do in the movie. He's not necessarily a crucial character, but he does some things and they give him lines 
that he didn't need to have if you weren't going to tell us who he was. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, he recognizes that his son employee, <laughs> F.U., has the mask and that he's killing these kids. Um, do we see him kill his mom who kisses him on the lips? She go. He goes home in the mask, and it, I think it's implied. I think she's watching TV, and he walks in in the mask, and I think she's she turns around and screams, and he moves towards her. I think that's the best we get for that. Mm, my favorite type of kill in a horror movie, off screen and unimplied. <laughs> cool. Um, he kills uh, Willie the kid. Like I said, we we he goes back to the radio station. Diana Prince gets killed off screen, and then Willie the kid gets his tongue cut off with scissors, which is decent. It's awesome, but it's it's one of those things where it's like at least the bullies were bullies. They were part of the movie. They were part of yeah. his journey. Who is the fuck is Willie the kid? Like, yeah, it, it was a cool kill, but like yeah, you gave it one just of looked the like most, they were like, uh, yeah. we haven't killed anybody this whole movie. We got to chop someone's tongue off. We got to chop somebody's tongue off. It's again, one of the coolest kills for a movie for a character. I don't know who that is or why I mm -hmm. care. I don't give yeah. a shit about this guy. Like, yeah, his his what he was saying on the radio was kind of stupid. But like no worse than the things we're hearing right now from people who have platforms like make him a bad guy. Like if you're if you're going right. to say like people who have mm. platforms shouldn't say shit that isn't real, shouldn't stoke the flames with bullshit conspiracy theories, then do that. Right, right, right. And they didn't. It just him, and I thought yeah. they were going to do something. It's like you said, Barry from the, the previous well, I guess the first franchise he was like, Ugh, Michael Myers, we're spending the night in the Michael Myers house because fuck that nonsense. And you're like the whole movie, you're like, clearly you are goading Michael Myers and that bullshit. We want him to get killed. Right. That's a, a trope. Yeah. He's the same thing as the bully, the same thing as the jock, the same thing as the cheerleader. It didn't make me want to kill Willie the kid. I didn't care about I didn't care. Like he's one I of didn't know him. Yeah. I didn't know if I liked it's just him like or not. That's like one of those people that you're like, oh, he says stupid shit. Okay, well, just walk away. Like, I didn't care. That was the worst part. Just, I didn't care. And mm. and and that's the worst thing a movie can be is make me apathetic. Like, yeah. Man, I don't care. And then we get back to Lori Strode's house and she comes home and Corey's sitting there and he's like, if I can't help her, no one can. And he slits his throat and you're like, bro. That's not how it works. Normally, when you say that, you kill the person you're talking about, not yourself, because if you kill yourself, then everybody can have her. Like she's, she's but look, that's his whole plan. Just, his whole plan was, first of all, Lori shoots him a couple times, then empties the rest of the gun in the wall. I'm not quite sure why, but she empties the rest of the gun in the wall. Then she is like, I'm going to, I guess she's trying to forgive him. And he's like, I said, I'm going to have her or no one's going to have her. And he slits his own throat. I, I, I'm assuming, and I, th I think this is, makes sense, knowing that Allison would think Lori did it because he does tell her, Laura, he does tell Allison earlier in the movie, your, your grandmother's trying to kill me. She just tried to kill me. And Allison's like, okay, I'll believe that because we're in love, Anakin. Uh. And so she walks in, look, Allison walks in and Lori is standing with a bloody knife over his dead body. And Allison's like, fuck this, I'm leaving. And like, it just, it doesn't, I understand what they were trying to do, but it just, it almost feels like one of those movies where they were like, here's what we want to do. Halloween ends. It's going to be three and a half hours long, but it's going to make a lot of sense and tie everything together. And they were like, you have an hour and 50 minutes, whatever you can fit in that you can do. And they just tossed all these scenes that would have made more sense because like, do you really think that your grandmother stabbed him in the throat? And also, if you're Lori, would you really you you heard Allison pull up? Would you really stand there holding the knife? Why would well, you have pulled the knife out if you weren't like just to stand there? Why You've you, seen people get killed before. You're not shocked. Why would you pull the knife out? If anybody had been that like much of a prepper, you know, first aid one one of somebody. Stabbed but in with a movies knife, like movie don't pull logic, the knife out. <sighs> if you and I, I thought the same thing. And when you I rewatched it last out. night, I thought maybe she was pulling it out to try to help him. And she does pull it out and try to hold his neck for a second, but then she just stands up with the knife. And you're like, you pull the knife out and drop the knife and then hold his neck if you're going to try to movie logic, try to help him. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's a device that has to happen so that Allison walks in and thinks she's the murderer and leaves. 
it's a pretty stupid, thin, flimsy thing. It the whole thing is stupid and flimsy. And at this point, I'm just like, finally, this kid killed the only person that mattered in this movie. He's gotten more kills than Michael Myers in this movie. Like by killing who? Himself. Oh. <laughs> Which, and people are like, oh, but he doesn't die. Yeah, dude, you slit your throat. You're going to bleed out. I, I, it already took way too long, but you, you're going to bleed out. Like, I'm sorry, that's what happens. You're gonna, he's going to bleed out. He will die. Michael Myers doesn't kill him. He just speeds up the process. He just put his foot on the gas for him. That kid killed himself. That's not a kill for Michael Myers. Don't even, don't even try. Like, so yo, he's Mike, there dying. Yeah, Mike, yeah, he's Lori dying. walks away. Michael Myers comes in, picks up the mask, Finally. kills the kid. Right. For, and like finishes at that yeah. point, it's like, why? Then it, then it becomes so, the movie we want to see. Right. Yeah. So the kid who the entire movie has been about doesn't even get to finish the third, the third act of the film. Right. And now, oh, here comes Michael Myers, you know, the main event that you've all been made to wait for. Thanks. Thanks for finally picking this up. Uh, if uh, I watched uh, Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills. I turn the movie on just as Michael Myers picks up the mask here. Right. At this point here. Yeah. And then any mention of Corey is forgotten. And this is, the, and then basically just tack that on to the last 10 minutes of Halloween kills. And we have a movie. I don't yeah. even think I would know that there was a different movie involved, but finally we get the, the thing that we came for and it's fine. I'm, you know, all right, cool. That's what I wanted. Thank you. I think it's great. Not great. I think it's perfect. It should be what it is. Yeah. The problem is, as much as I don't have a problem with the rest of the movie up to this point, as you do, what it was not the movie that this one ends. This no. last couple scenes here, it doesn't jive with everything we just saw. It and, really, it doesn't hinge on it. There's nothing we in just there. Saw doesn't Allison jive with runs the back in films. at the last moment. It makes no sense. Yeah. The other two films set up a completely different film. And this movie told a completely different story and ended with a different film. That's not a brave choice. That's not swinging for the fences. That is not interesting. That isn't even creative. This is bad. There's no, I don't understand how, like, if the other part of the movie, like, take Michael Myers out of this whole thing, and you're like, I like this. I like this idea of a bullied kid who is driven to murder. That's fine. I will not knock it. But if you're like, this is a good Halloween movie, I think you're wrong. And that's it's okay. almost we like can disagree. You it's almost like you should have this switched. Is a good ending to the series. You should have started this movie with this fight, right, yes. between Laurie and Michael Myers. It could have ended the same way that did, and then you should have you could have done the Corey bullshit for the rest of the movie. I'm not saying that's a movie I want to see, but it would have made more sense because now, okay, and, Michael Myers, you yeah. ended that story. Now we have the new Michael Myers. Whether he dies at the end or not. You've now said that you can fucking mind meld, right? Laurie okay, it works him? for sequels. Lori killing him is probably the best way to end that that other. You're absolutely right. Start with the last ten minutes of this movie. After she meat grinds him, then they and they have the funeral, and then start her decorating the thing, telling her story, writing a book, and then this kid shows up and becomes the new Michael Myers. That's a better movie. That's right. not it's what not I want. Great, but but like it's yeah. fine. It makes sense and then, in a movie way. And then you could just say that was Michael Myers there for real or not? You're like, no, I literally saw his body meat grinded. So it's in this kid's head. Okay, that's kind of cool. But but you you Nightmare on Elm Street toot it and didn't have enough homoeroticism to make me like it. <laughs> Man, horror movie sequels are uh, rules are very close to babysitting rules. <laughs> And um like third okay look third <laughs> films often suck they they it really can, like tell me other than halloween 3 which is an anomaly because it is so weird but can you think of a third movie that was actually trying to complete a story that was like fucking phenomenal no not i mean i would use the term phenomenal very rare in general but sure um but like Okay, like I, I can think of a lot of movies where the sequel is like, fuck yeah, holy shit. And then the yeah. third one's like a letdown. It, they usually are. Like, yeah. Guys, tell us on social media, where is a third movie in a, in a continuous story satisfying? John Wick. Yes. Again, not Shakespeare, yes. but for me, John Wick 2, I was pretty underwhelmed by. And then John Wick 3, I was like, that's the fucking sequel I wanted. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll give that to you. Um, I Return like, of the Jedi, if you count that. Yeah, I think I think Return of the I I agree with Return of the Jedi. I know some people who don't though because of Ewoks. 
and that's fine. Uh, I like Nightmare on Elm Street 3. I think that's a good one, but that isn't technically a continuous story. Well, sort of is to the first one. Yeah. They're already doing that retcon, but I, I, you know, maybe. But it's like in trilogies, the third one's always tough. Like Dark Knight was pretty good, and then Dark Knight Rises just didn't tell the story. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is that makes it so hard, but um, yeah, so well, they, they kill Michael Myers. Do you like the kill? You like the fight and everything? Yes, I do. I do. And I was like, this is what I'm here for. But Knife, I was so... She stabs his hands to the table. Crucifies. And he pulls him. his hand through. He pulls yes. his hand out and cuts his hand in half. So that was great. awesome. I'm thinking she's got to be like in her 60s, right? Yeah. He smashes her face through a glass cabinet, which she has no scarring for. He throws her into the refrigerator, picks her up and throws her and throws her across the table a couple times. I fucking hope like I honestly think right now if someone my size did that to me, I, I don't know. If, like, fuck, and I think I'm pretty tough. I'm fucking old, bro. If I was a 60 year old woman who's already got my ass kicked through two other movies. I don't know, man, a face through a glass cabinet and then slammed into the refrigerator. That might I, do it for me. I sit wrong through a zoom meeting i sit wrong through our podcasting <laughs> and i pay for it tomorrow like i'll be sore yeah. my butt hurts yeah i'm already butthurt about this movie i don't need i don't need my chair to make it worse um it's a it's good but like again at this point i'm i'm so mad at everything that had come up to this point that this is just like making it worse because you're like this is what i wanted finally here it is in the last yeah way too long ass however long i've watched this movie um they stab him up he stabs her with a knitting needle in the neck like how you like it bitch yeah like that's okay. Cool. Great. We're doing it. And then Allison shows up and helps kill her, kill it. Great. Cool. And then the cops finally show up and they're like, oh man. And then like the mayor shows up and he's like, oh man. And they're like, this is the a protocol. Black cowboy cop comes out and they're tying him to the roof of yeah. her station wagon. Yeah. And he's like, they're like, this isn't how we do it. And he's like, it is tonight. And you're like, you haven't been in this entire movie. And I just watched Halloween and Halloween Kills in the last week. Yeah. He wasn't a big deal in either of those either. Yeah. Who I, gives a shit? Why are you pulling in at the last minute to jump out and be in this movie? I, that didn't even bug me that much. <clears throat> there was just too many of those like little things are like, yeah, they're salt lorry at the grocery store. And they're like, because of you, my sister got stabbed in the neck. And you're like, I had nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with the that, same but killer. Tried hey, that, to kill me, stabbed your sister. That's not my fault. Hey, that chick lived. Does that mean we take her off the kill count from Halloween Kills? Is it only 35 now? Interesting. Um, <clears throat> somebody called James A. Janice. Anyway, it's... It, <sighs> Halloween Kills had a fuck ton of Easter eggs, right? Yeah. A fuck ton. The Easter eggs in this were, like, lame. They're like, hey, remember that guy from that movie that you guys didn't like? Here he is again. <laughs> hey, remember that kill from the first movie that I've done in, in every Halloween movie? Yeah, here it is again, right? And you're like, no, but the last one had Halloween three masks and had like flashbacks and had Loomis in it. Loomis isn't even in this, except maybe Loomis in like declined. He said, I don't want to. Donald Pleasance literally rolled over in his grave so he didn't have to answer this this call. The smart move, you know, he actually, have, <laughs> I applaud his corpse for that. Um, so they drive him to Corey's workplace of employment, the fucking uh, uh, Garage, auto yard. Fucking yeah. dump and place. They throw him in a giant. Well, they car. have this funeral, right? Where yeah. all these cars, including the car with Michael Myers on top, tied dead, dead Michael Myers tied. They're just driving him down the street and everybody in Haddonfield is just watching. They're all watching and following. Okay. The dump. All right, fine. It's it's dumb, but I, I again, if that's how it actually ended and the movie sure. was good, I wouldn't have cared. I would have been. I actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I fine. probably would have cried at that point. I would have been like, eh, well, you never end. see uh, like. So they bring them to this dump, and there there's this fucking grinding thing that destroys everything. That we they they did plant the seed earlier. They showed us this checkoff's machine earlier. They throw his body. Lori throws his body in there, and we watch it get destroyed. You yeah. never see like. We've seen Michael Myers and Jason and whoever get drowned. We've seen them go down into the into the abyss. We've seen them get electrocuted. We've seen them zapped. We've seen them beheaded. We've seen them whatever. I don't know, man. He was rendered into like ground Chuck. You know, it's like I think only I Chucky be has interested. ever come back from this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would be interested to see 
how you come back in the next movie. I would be interesting to see what the next, uh, how you could get that body back. So I was like, okay, interesting. Yeah, but I'm fine with it. I'm fine. But then yeah. I'm like, okay, now throw the mask in. What a great moment where she holds it out. Everybody sees oh, it. Oh, yeah, that would have been cool. In. Like, oh, no, nope, nope. You're keeping the mask? Well, I guess there's a reason for that, right? Oh, yeah, because she's the new Mikey Mike. So, well, she's clickety-clacking, right? The movie after that, she's clickety-clacking about, like, finishing her book. And she ends it by saying, evil doesn't die, it changes shape. Which I really uh, like because okay. the the shape and okay, evil and Corey. And then she goes outside and flirts with the fucking old cop who's in this movie for no reason. And he really wasn't in, in, in the other movies for any reason either. But now she's like, okay, am I just going to, you know, go see Cherry Blossoms with this asshole? And it's like such a forced fucking ah, old people in love. And now I'll be a true old grandma. And then it cuts to her writing room and the michael myers mask is on her table they let her keep that evidence come on right well Stupid. i mean I, at that point i think they kind of threw protocol out the window right like <laughs> but it's like they hand her the game ball they're like here you go you got this one tonight i thought i for sure thought like okay yeah they're trying to imply that she or someone else will be the next michael myers right evil changes shape you could have zapped people with the eyes the homeless guy says, I'm Michael Myers. So then I'm wondering, has Michael Myers soul transferred with multiple people and they're only just showing us Corey's story? Is there another thing that later they could retcon or just be like, oh, yeah, he also zapped his soul or Corey zapped his soul into Allison or something before, whatever. I'll watch that movie if you make it. But I did read something that was pretty interesting about how <clears throat> Michael Myers gets shot and falls off the balcony in the very first Halloween in, yeah. in the 70s. He falls off. Loomis looks over and he's gone. Then there's a kind of a sequence through the house, a POV through the house, and you hear Michael's breathing. This kind of mirrors this movie, the end of this movie kind of mirrors that, where we go through her house as she's macking on the porch with the old cop. We go through the house, but it's silent. So it's almost showing us that Michael is, at least this author was saying that Michael is dead because even though we're seeing his mask and everything, we're not hearing his voice like we did in the first one. Can it's you imagine thing. if they actually get Jamie Lee Curtis back for the next one, she takes over the Loomis role and she's like, I meat grindered him 10 minutes, yeah. <laughs> six times. Six times. Six. I just watched that one too. I remember me and my friend, we were, me and my cousin actually, were doing that when we were kids. Six times? I shot him six times? Six times. Six times. I meat grindered him <laughs> for like three minutes. Uh, um, it was terrible. It, this, is, this is the most I wanted to see the whole, whole time, time, this yeah. whole funeral where they're driving with Michael Myers' dead body. I'm like, there's a dead kid in her, in her foyer, in her foyer, right? Like, there's just a dead kid at the bottom of her stairs. Yeah. And I was like, did some cops stay back and like forensics that, or did they just all go do this funeral and left this dead kid? And I would love to make a cut of this movie where everything is the same, but they just keep cutting back to different shots of Corey's dead body laying there during the funeral. <laughs> I also want the guy who is not from Haddonfield. Who's just like honking his horn. Like what the fuck is happening? Yeah. Is the Pope in town? <laughs> You Sunday drivers! Ah, oh, what the fuck? And he's the just seventh honking. guy, the seventh guy in the car in the in, in the funeral procession. It's just like, wait, there's no turnoffs. A one lane road. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman's like, you know, the the wife is like, you wanted to cut through Haddonfield. It was supposed to save forty five minutes. Ways didn't tell me we were having a funeral. Yeah, God, we ways. were we were Amanda's dad was <laughs> driving us to a uh, an airport one morning. And we were literally stuck behind a funeral and he was losing his shit. And he was going, he literally said, where the fuck are they burying this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Out in Hoboken? What is this shit? <sighs> this is, uh, yeah, it was really bad. It was really, really, really fucking bad. I don't hold it. And I guess I don't know why. I don't hold as much against it as you do. I agree. What was, it was good? I don't tell me what was good. Nothing. I don't. Well, well, not nothing. But the things that I've made an argument for, I think, were interesting. If you but watch I guess, this as a shitty movie, like 
Like, like we, sure, we, you can watch this as a shitty. We movie. love shitty movies. I no, this is too boring for a shitty movie. It's about too, it's it's Heather's, but not funny. It's it's Joker, but not interesting. There's no nuance to it. It's cliche. It's the Halloween, loves, but no Michael Myers. But no Michael Myers. There's the love story isn't even that good. Like no, it's not good at all. But but we've watched shitty movies, and I like shitty movies, and I wouldn't like this it, even if it didn't say Halloween ends, and I just watched it. I'd be like, I wouldn't what, hate what it. What was that? But I would have been completely forgettable we'll never I need guess to it's see it just, again it's interesting to me i guess that so many choices were made to make this and i guess i just want to be like really like i want to watch it i watched it twice now and i kind of want to watch it again to be like you put this together on purpose yeah this way why? Why did you do this? Why did I you guess do it this I feel way? that way about Mario Brothers, the, the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> I feel that, this movie is on par with that, but I'll, I'll watch Mario Brothers any day you want and, 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 and play that same game. Like, this is such a brilliant like, game of why did you pick this as your choice? But this is like every time you're like, I had high hopes that you would finish the trilogy to the first time I cared about Michael Myers. Right. And instead, it's just like, uh no, that was a mistake. The Maybe thing I you think liked, I'm missing something. The thing that you liked that well to me, I feel like I feel like this movie to me was like, hey, the thing that you like. Finally, we made a Michael Myers that that Aaron McLean liked. It's like they made it for me. It was he was a juggernaut. He's a slasher. He's killing. It li- it's living up to his name. I finally buy that Laurie Strode is a is experiencing the PTSD that that I feel is appropriate from the first film. And they're like, ah, all that was a mistake. So suddenly you're just like, wow, wow, thanks for not completing the pass. You had it. We we set it all up, and then you just 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 took a dump. I don't disagree. <clears throat> I, I maybe it's because I think I'm missing something. Like I think that maybe it makes sense if I look at it from this angle or or way more of this scene heavier. So like I don't know, but it's more like intriguing to me that it's like if you told me a riddle or something and I did fully get it, I'd be like, Hmm, I'd be thinking about it later. Maybe. I don't know. I I don't, I don't hold it. I'm not against it. I certainly don't like it. I'm not going to buy it, but like, I'm curious, I guess. Uh, Here's, I guess it also makes me feel stupid that I have the Halloween kills Michael Myers, like in my cabinet. I, like I'm pointing to a cabinet that's here. What do you? Yeah, <laughs> I I am in a like hotel room in Savannah, me? and I'm pointing at a a digital background of my <laughs> cabinet of toys. Um, I don't own Halloween Kills yet, but if the trilogy was good, I was going to get the whole thing. Like I am very much into Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills because it delivered on what I wanted. And then suddenly this came along and just was like, well, I guess I don't even like I don't even care about this so much that it's like Halloween Kills which I enjoyed. I don't even feel like I want to watch that again because there's no satisfying conclusion. Like, you're not only doing that, but you're like also kind of ruining two other films for me. Well, which movie, which previously made Halloween movie would come nicely after Halloween Kills? I guess Halloween 2? 2. Yeah. Right? That would fit, but what would be funny? Halloween, which is the one that they go into the house with the video cameras? Resurrection? Resurrection, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Like, this is the thing. Halloween H2O was the one that was like, hey, we're the one right after the first one. And now she's fine. And she's like in charge. She's a principal at a school and she had no PTSD. And you're like, Halloween ends basically did that to itself, which was like, (laughs) dude, you had to reboot this because that fucking didn't work, right? You had to reboot it because Halloween H2O isn't the worst movie, but it's not the greatest either. Like you had seen all the same movies I had, and these were the choices you made. <laughs> and then the movie that you're like, I'm going to do it my way. And, and this was the, how you concluded that this, this unbelievable, unfucking believable. When I, when I, in my kindergarten class, walk over to a student who's done some shit work, I'll look at it and I'll say, that's what baby C colors like, meaning my son. This is what baby C directs like. <laughs> 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 this is how baby C would end a trilogy. <laughs> I, 
I, I don't I, know. I, I certainly didn't hate it. It's more just like, it certainly did. I, and I can't tell you why, because the sum of the parts is a failure. All the different things I'm telling you are failures. But I just am like, I'm more curious about why. If, if you like it because of all the wrong choices it made, and that is like interesting, fine. I'm, I'm actually, actually more supportive of that. I and guess maybe, that's it. I don't like it. I'm interested in it or interested by it. Like, does that make sense? Like, I don't think it's good, but it's interesting. But look, we, we live in a dumpster fire right now. Like we're living in an era of every day, a dumpster fire is burning harder and br- brighter. I go to the movies to escape, to watch, sure. the, to watch, to watch them pretend that there is a world where the biggest dumpster fire is a guy in a mask, uh, a William Shatner mask turned inside out, stabbing people. But instead, you just showed me more dumpster fire. And that was. And actually, that was one of the things I don't like about Halloween 2018 and kills is him as a, as a stalker, as a killer, as a slasher. He's brutal. Halloween kills has so many kills where he's just slamming someone's head against something. It's not fun. And I think a lot of these new horror, especially slasher movies, I don't know if it's just that we as a society are in a different place than we were in the 70s, but like in the 70s, when Laurie Strode and her friends are getting murdered, it's fun. In Scream in the 90s, when those kids are getting murdered, it's fun. In Halloween Kills, there's a couple times where I almost have to look away because it's brutal. It doesn't seem fun. It's not like, yeah, that punk is getting his just desserts. It's like we're watching you smash his face apart on a counter and you're like, that's a little too, I don't know if it's just too real because it looks so real or you don't pull away. I don't know, but it's like almost too real. And then I'm going to make his wife watch. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's like, that's yeah. not uh, part of horror is to be over the top and fun. And I think there is a formula and like we could probably deconstruct that to a certain extent. But I think that some of these new movies and I think Rob Zombies did it to an extreme. It was not fun. It was too dark, too hard, too brutal too extreme that to me there's no reason to watch especially the first rob zombie one but the choices of this are so bizarre to me like you said and such a failure david gordon green made a film that made rob zombies movies seem better oh i still like, disagree with that i don't like, like either of th- those this is compared to this. a seismic at least he's not mind melding with anybody at least he it, he came to do what he came to do at least nobody came up and slap fought him for his mask. At least he doesn't have a sidekick. Like the Rob Zombie movies are now in comparison somehow better. And you're like, if somebody was like Halloween ends in the DVD player or Rob Zombie's Halloween two, I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I'd probably. Oh well, yeah, I agree. Yeah, Rob Zombie's Halloween two is going in every time. And now it's like, do you want to watch Halloween Kills or Rob Zombie's Halloween 2? And I'm like, well, Kills will just remind me of how the end of this movie isn't going to complete. So, fuck Rob Zombie's 2. What about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 end? <laughs> if there was a third one, I guarantee you it would be better than this. Rob Zombie knew how to finish his trilogy to his liking. We wouldn't have been like, yeah, but like, it would have... It would have fit the trilogy. The Devil's Rejects, whatever, Three from Hell. That wasn't a, a great, fantastic movie, but it completed that trilogy in a way that you're like, yeah, well, that's how that... I, I haven't guess, watched that. I haven't seen that one That's yet. how that story gets wrapped up. Th- this doesn't make any sense, and I'm just... I don't know. What if it's I, all a dream? What if there's another one, and they're like, that, that part wasn't real because... As of the mind meld, Corey died, and the rest of that was Corey's fever, dead dream. That would be brave and interesting. <laughs> like li- literally waking up halfway through this movie and being like, "It was just a dream." I used to read Word Up magazine. That would have been the brave, <laughs> interesting thing. When people are like, "He's," it's such a brave, interesting, daring take. No, it's- I don't think it's brave. I think it's bullshit. interesting, and it's one of those to be like, "Can you explain it to me?" Like, I'd love to sit down with director, producer, writers, and be like. Can you explain this to me? Yeah, I what were you trying to go for? Too. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it together, Rumi. Let's have them on. And like they're like looking at you, and you're like pulling out your notes, and they're looking at me, and I'm just scowling. 
<laughs> licking licking your lips, <laughs> pulling a rusty knife out of the wall, getting ready. Just steam coming out of my ears, and they're like, um, I think I'm going to let the redhead ask me questions. You were very animated tonight, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Did you guys like this movie or what? Tell, tell us, us what you liked. Tell us what you disliked. Um, okay. It's very rare. I told Amanda I was so excited to talk about this because I was like, Rumi hates it. And I don't think it was good, but Rumi hates it. And I was like, and I never like the things that Rumi hates and vice versa. I was like, this is... This will be interesting to see. Usually I like something and you don't. It's very like this is yeah. the year that I've run into more like more movies that I hate than I've liked. And it, it's it's sad to me because I, I used to love everything, everything. But like that Spider-Man movie had me like <laughs> f- just just fill a fucking diaper. I think it's because of your hair. I think you have stupid hair now. And I think that's making <laughs> <laughs> my luscious it, locks. He can't even yeah. see my hair and it's burning. Like, dude. These locks, man, Ooh, they hot. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, this one made me fill a diaper and I had a blowout, man. There was shit everywhere. <laughs> Big fucking piss whiny baby about this one. But at least I can admit it, you know? <laughs> and and I yeah, instead we of going and becoming a serial killing murder spree guy. Yeah, I thought we were getting better after I watched the Spider-Man No Way Go Home. Um <laughs> And you like were like, look, it's not that bad. And I was like, you know what? You're right. If people like Spider Man No Way Home, they're f- that's fine. You know, that's fine. And I thought I was getting better about that. Like, you know what? If people like that, if you like that, this, that's fine. And then it comes to this, and it's like, if you like this, this is like the equivalent. This is the Prometheus of Halloween films. Oh, for, well. And I was just gonna say, it really is because we kind of talked about it and deconstructed it a bit tonight as a Halloween movie. But if you just talked about it as a horror movie, the Corey part is fine. But then the Michael Myers part is very disjointed when you put it into the Corey thing. So whether it's whether you make it a Halloween movie or in, like make Michael Myers a serial killer, an unnamed serial killer, it's not part of a franchise that's been around since the 70s. It still is a very disjointed story. It still has characters who connect and disconnect in ways that don't really make sense. It has grown men yeah. celebrating birthdays the way that women celebrate birthdays <laughs> and in and their children. Teens. I think <laughs> you are a horror movie and you don't have you have one kill at the beginning and then you don't have another kill for 45 minutes. You're doing it wrong. That is that is terrible horror movie pacing, period, period. Tell me any movie that does that and like it better pick the fuck up after that. You don't do that. That just doesn't work, period. That's bad horror movies. Come on. He's wagging his finger. That's bad horror movie. Bad. Bad horror movie. <laughs> Tell us what you thought. Just unload. <laughs> Let us know. Facebook, Instagram, I hope and Twitter. everyone just loves it. Everyone. I'm going to go in and try to like delete every bad comment I see so just, that everyone, everyone that responds that you the, read is The most loving. that I hear that people are like, I, I either hear, I, I actually think it's kind of interesting what they tried to do. Okay. I don't know what they tried to do. And then I want to figure one, it out. But. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I ask, and I can't get a good answer. Well, the, you know, the, they're trying to show that evil is inside all of us. It's like, okay, is, is this the moment you wanted to bring that up? This one in the, thir- in the third <laughs> film? Of, this, is, this is when you wanted to bring that up? You didn't want to try and seed that into the other films at all? And they're like, well, they kind of did. Yeah, but it's about a guy in a mask killing people, and we wanted to see the end of that story, and they were trying to bring up something way more cerebral. Uh, anyway, and then the other thing that people like is like Corey's so hot, and I'm like, again, no, is but, he? N- oh God, dude, there's an entire world of people who are like, oh, wounded little bullied boys, mm, so hot, mm, mm. I want to bring them to the Halloween dance. Look, and then go like this when they lay on the floor inexplicably. I want to go. <laughs> yeah, just dance over them. <laughs> I would have considered myself a wounded little bully boy at one point when I was much, much younger. I didn't kill anybody. I just made sure that all of them saw what a fucking awesome success I was on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) I love to think that those people right now are listening to this and they're like, he's right. He's co-host of the Launchpad podcast. He's right. one of the original rubies and a rocketeer. <laughs> I was, I, <laughs> had I known this in high school, I might not have laid into this nerd so hard. 
<laughs> I, I am sort of kidding, but at the same time, like if you are a, a, a wounded, bullied person and you think this is a hot win for you, like just live better, just be better. Don't give into that shit and certainly don't kill anybody and certainly don't kill yourself. That's stupid. Be better. Just put the brakes on it. Evil dies tonight. Kill the Michael Myers in, in, inside of you and just live better. That's all I want to say, okay? See, I would say get some training because if you have a switchblade and you are disarmed with a single drumstick, you shouldn't have had that switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> like I think if Michael Myers was looking out of the tunnel at that point, he'd be like, "Oh, never mind." Rumi, let's blast this thing off. Try not with to our, come our sp- split. Our sp- I was gonna say try <laughs> not to come hands blood. Pulled. <laughs> <sighs> That's gonna be my tagline under this. <laughs> try not to. <laughs> blood. All right, we're the Rocketeers and we're out. Mission sequence start. Six, five, four. I also was thinking it would be funny if we did this whole episode with two other hosts and then at the like the last 20 minutes of the episode, me and you came in and were like, oh, this is this is the launch. This is the end of the Launchpad podcast that you were hoping for. Three, two, one. We are all engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff.